Hi, welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Nate Wallace, lead engineer at Monroe. Monroe is an engineering consulting firm that specializes in benchmarking, detailed cost analysis, and new product development. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Hyundai Ionic 9. Uh, the vehicle that we received is actually their top trim spec, the calligraphy design. So this one features their matte gold paint. Uh, in this top trim spec, there are only two, trim, two paint colors available, this matte gold, and there is also a greenish matte silver. Um, if you take a step down from there, they do offer other color options. Um, I think that the design of this particular vehicle is incredibly polarizing, um, so much so that most of the people that I've talked to uh, have not found it very attractive. In fact, I've had a hard time finding anyone that thinks it's attractive. Uh, beyond that, I think it's, it looks like uh, somebody prompted an older version of AI to design a futuristic 8-bit derived vehicle. Um, I, that's my personal opinion. I don't think it's a nice looking vehicle from the exterior. I will say that it is uh, easy to drive, has plenty of power in this top trim spec, which, uh, of which there are many trim specs and there are actually a lot of different powertrain options available. In the most basic trim spec, the S, uh, which starts at 59,000, this has a 215 horsepower rear wheel drive motor only, uh, and it achieves 335 miles of range, which I think is, is great. Um, I think that's a really comfortable amount of range to have in a vehicle. Uh, from there, you bump up to the SE, $63,000 with 303 horsepower, and that's an all wheel drive at that point, uh, 320 miles of range in that version. Once you get up to the limited, the calligraphy and the calligraphy design, uh, this vehicle has 422 horsepower and an all wheel drive system, and it achieves 311 miles of range. Uh, the limited starts at 71, and I think this vehicle tops out at 77,000. All right, uh, it does feature 350 kilowatt DC fast charging, 110 kilowatt pack, and per their uh, marketing, it can achieve 10 to 80% charge in 24 minutes, which is really fast. So the reason that I referenced an 8-bit prompt in, in AI is you can see that the lighting features are all these uh, blocked lights here. They continue down here and here. So, uh, we will see at the the tail end of the vehicle, the tail lights also feature the same uh, design cues. Under hood, we have a small frunk that is basically there to hold all of the charging cables, tire mobility kits, roadside hazard uh, materials. Other than that, there's not a lot of space. You might fit a large backpack or a small carry-on suitcase, but otherwise that's about it. One of the things uh, that we thought was interesting, this is the first vehicle that Monroe has tested and had that was not a Tesla vehicle that had the NAX charger. Uh, so this is equipped with the, the Tesla style NAX charger here. One thing that's of interest is how large the charge port door is, given how small the charger, the actual port is to charge. Um, we, we have speculated that this may be because they had the vehicle designed prior to deciding to go to the NAX port versus the CCS charger. Um, just an interesting point. My suspicion is that these lights here indicate a charge level for the vehicle. Uh, currently it's fully charged, so all of the lights are illuminated. Uh, this button here will cancel the charge so that you can remove the charging, the charger, and we have the button to close the door here. You can open it from here, I think, by just pushing on the squares. So that's convenient. I have driven vehicles where that's not the case and you have to press the button to open the charge door which is annoying. Moving to the interior of the vehicle, uh, before we get started talking about the actual interior, I do wanna cover the driving and handling dynamics of the vehicle. So 
as I mentioned previously, this is the top of the line spec for this vehicle. It does have a 422 horsepower all wheel drive system, which makes this vehicle pretty quick. I believe it's under five seconds, zero to 60 time, um, making it one of the faster vehicles that I've reviewed for Monroe. Uh, and it feels that it's, it is quick. Uh, I will also say that the experience driving this is pretty nice. It's probably the top, one of the top five quietest vehicles I've ever driven or ridden in, which is saying a lot. I've been in some pretty high end vehicles. So this vehicle features a level one ADAS system with most of the features that you would expect with that. It has lane keeping, lane centering, adaptive cruise control, uh, which all function reasonably well. The lane keeping works very well on the highway. Uh, it's centered without a lot of fuss. Once you get off the highway, the lane centering struggles a little bit more. The vehicle tends to wander a little more side to side. You can feel the steering wheel working to keep the vehicle centered. Um, so that's uh, less great. The Probably my biggest complaint about the way the ADAS works in this vehicle is, at least in the modes that I tried, as I was approaching stop vehicles, uh, this the car tended to want to stop much earlier than I did. And I am actually a pretty conservative driver. So I start slowing down way before I come to st stop vehicles. And this vehicle is even more conservative than me. And it hits the brakes pretty hard when you do that. So uh, I did not like that about the ADAS system in this vehicle. Uh, my other complaint about this, the way this vehicle rode and handled is uh, that overall it was relatively composed. Um, you couldn't really hear the suspension working, which is nice. It was went over bumps relatively comfortably. However, there were two times on roads that I have a lot of experience with. Uh, I've driven many vehicles over them uh, that the, the vehicle tended to shimmy over those bumps. So instead of uh, driving over the bump and continuing on your way, as you went over the bump, the rear end pitched to one side, which was unexpected. Uh, I don't really know what it is that caused that. Um, I do know that this is the only vehicle I've ever driven over those bumps that has done that. So worth note. The HMI is relatively easy to use. I didn't really struggle to connect my phone. That all worked very well. I basically stayed in Apple CarPlay most of the time I was in the vehicle as I do with most. Um, one of the things that I, I did not like about it is uh, the fact that you have your you do most of your HMI up here in the screen, but then some of the HMI is down lower with these physical buttons. I am a proponent of physical buttons. I like the ability to, to do certain features without having to dig through menus. My beef is that I, I tend not to look way, there's a large gap between where you do most of your HMI and this section of buttons. And so, for instance, when you're in Apple CarPlay mode, in order to get back to the vehicle's home screen, you have to go to this button down here. I did not see a physical or a, a digital button on the screen, which was a little annoying, especially when I'm driving and I have to now try to find those buttons down here. That's probably my largest beef with the HMI. Beyond that, a uh, lot of controls on the steering wheel, which I also like. Uh, it's much easier to find a button here than down here. Um, there are seat controls on the side here for massage uh, and selecting whether you're driver one or driver two. There are also seat controls on the side of the seat, which are very standard. Um, moving on to the seats, they do have, at least in this high end trim, there are some very nice features. The side bolsters, are adjustable so they adjust in width which being a heavier set person I appreciate the ability to adjust that um, the the massage seat is actually really unique compared to any vehicle I've been in 
most of the time, if you have a massage seat, it's in your back. Um, so you get, you might have, they might achieve that with, um, airbags, right? So they can inflate or def deflate airbags within the seat, or they might actually put in a mechanical system to provide a massage in this vehicle though, those massagers are actually in the seat itself, which I think is brilliant. Um, so on longer trips, when you're sitting, it actually takes in and moves the seat side to side, which feels like it relieves some pressure uh, from your butt, which is great. So one of the things that I found most interesting about the interior of this vehicle uh, is a feature that's not present on some of the lower trim levels. So you, I think you have to get to either the limited or the calligraphy variants of this vehicle to get this feature, um, but is this armrest. So it does a couple of unique things. The first one is that it slides. So it's currently in its all the way forward state. But I can actually take this and slide it to the back, um, which just opens up some more room here. If you're a person who has, you know, a large bag you may want to store here or uh, just want to feel like it's a more open cockpit. So um, it has a built-in charger, some buttons here that are useful actually. So you can activate your parking cameras here at a, at a press of a button. Um, your parking sensors, hill descent, auto hold. And then this is how you select through your drive modes. So you can use the toggle to select your eco normal sport or my drive modes. And then also if you want to tell it which terrain modes you want, the options are snow, mud, or sand, and then you can uh, toggle between those with the lever. So it's nice that those are all right there uh, at your fingertips while you're driving. The other thing that I think is interesting is Hyundai in a lot of their vehicles now has uh, a fingerprint scanner. So you can actually use this to unlock the vehicle to start it, and you can use it to lock your uh, profile settings so that uh, if you loan the vehicle out or valet, um, maybe maybe you don't want your wife to change your settings, whatever it may be, um, you can use this to lock lock your your driver settings. Um, I know this is an, a strange thing to to be concerned with, but the cup holders are nice and large. Um, I have a couple of cups that are not necessarily very tall. They're not large volume but they are large diameter and those fit great in here and they also do a great job of holding small diameter cups from moving around even though the cup holders are so large so very useful very nice cup holders um, one more interesting feature about the center console is that the lid opens both from the front and you can also open it from the rear so that rear passengers have access to this as well i suppose so we talked briefly about these parking sensors um, or the, this parking button. Hyundai has a parking feature, a, a remote operated parking feature in their vehicles that I actually want to demonstrate. Um, I think this could have been a very useful feature um, and it still has some use case, I suppose. Uh, but it was limited by the way that you activate it. And, and I'll explain what that means. So um, we can see here on the side of the fob, there are four buttons. So one of those buttons is to open the front. One of those buttons is to open the rear hatch. And the two in the middle are for this remote operated uh, parking feature. So... Uh, when I first saw that, I thought, oh man, that's awesome. You get into a crowded parking garage or a crowded parking lot. All of the spaces are very tight. This is not a small vehicle. Maybe you want to get the vehicle lined up with your parking space, and then you can use this to pull the vehicle into the spot uh, where maybe you wouldn't have normally been able to get out of the driver's side. And you can do that. Great feature, love that. Problem is that if you come back to the car the only way to activate this feature is from inside the car. So I can get the car into the spot 
and I have a way of shutting it off with a remote, but I can't get the car back out of the spot without climbing in through the rear hatch <laughs> and trying to somehow start the vehicle climbing over everything. So, but then once the feature is uh, activated, then I would be able to, re to move the vehicle out of the spot uh, remotely. So I'd like to go ahead and, and demonstrate this feature now. So, so in order to engage it, you have to pull up to a parking space. You have to put the vehicle in park then you press and hold the parking camera button and it pops up with the remote parking instructions, which is basically leave the vehicle with the smart key in your pocket. So I'm gonna do that now. And close the doors. Then the vehicle's in the smart park mode. Now I can press and hold the forward button and the vehicle should continue onto the parking space. You'll see it straightened the wheel and now the vehicle is moving forward into its spot. So, okay, there you go. You see the vehicle has straightened itself out so that it is relatively centered in the spot. It does use its array of sensors to mitigate running into different features or structures or other vehicles um, and then when the vehicle is in this mode you can actually use it to back up so i can hold the button and back the vehicle up hopefully so maybe i've waited too long or i don't really know but the vehicle has parked itself um, again this is a great feature to get a vehicle into a spot uh, there is a way that you can shut this off using the key fob. So once the vehicle's in the spot, you can shut it off. My only complaint is if it's in a tight spot that you had to use the fob to get the vehicle in this spot, how do you get it back out without having to climb through a window or climb through the rear hatch? So to summarize, this vehicle is quick, quiet, comfortable. It has all the features you would expect in a vehicle. If it were me, I would probably go with a lower end trim spec like the SE, uh, which gets you all wheel drive, 320 miles of range at a price point that feels much more realistic for this vehicle, about 63,000. In its current trim spec at almost $80,000, I think there are other vehicles that I would rather pay that money for. Um, but all in all, it's a great vehicle that ultimately just has polarizing styling.